we this go. conference will now be recorded. Okay, so now I'm going to get going on this. I'll start from uh, current slide. And here we get going. So um, if you had a chance to attend the conference, the webinar conference that they had yesterday, or I guess just a webinar, uh, OAR put it on. It was sponsored by Jenny Pakula was on there, as well as Drew Coleman. Drew Coleman is the OAR chair-elect, a really great guy. I've known him for several years. Um, they had on there Lawrence Young. He is the NAR's chief economist. Uh, yesterday, they presented to uh, the news media the stats for March, uh, and he, he was going from, uh, Lawrence Young was going from Oregon to Kentucky to different states doing his presentation with webinars, just kind of like what he did with Oregon. So the first set of slides I have here were produced by Lawrence Young, and obviously from the National Association of Realtors. He is, again, the top chief economist there. He's talking about here on this first slide about the annual GDP growth rate, 2.9% um, in 2018, slowing in 2019, and it's going to, it's really ugly right now. You know, we're talking and anticipating that the GDP this year is going to be very, very slow. Uh, obviously, with the pandemic, it's very difficult for businesses to make any sort of money, probably with the exception of businesses such as uh, Zoom and GoToMeeting, the tech stuff. Uh, there's been a lot of explosion in that. So even during a downturn, there's opportunities always out there. So the total jobs in Oregon pre-pandemic to March, we were on a boom. Uh, there's been tons of jobs. Uh, in fact, the, I think the unemployment rate in Oregon prior to the yes. pandemic, there was only 4,000 people who are who are in the in the entire state who are unemployed uh, looking for work. So that's almost nothing. And so pre-pandemic jobs in Oregon, very, very strong, very strong. The first time unemployment, as you can see, it hit. Uh, this is across the nation right here. This is national st statistics. We all heard that figure about how unemployment uh, first time uh, claims up to 7 million, it, it's been pretty, pretty awful. The encouragement has been that first time unemployment claims have dropped as far as people who have just lost their job or just getting out there and, and making the claims. It was a big, massive push, obviously, here mid-March, end of March, when, when the government shut down all the businesses across the country, I guess the non-essential businesses but definitely impacted a lot of people. Again, this is national stats right here. So in Oregon, first time unemployment insurance files. So in March, 3,000, then um, March 28th, just less than 50,000, excuse me, and now over 60,000, um, first time beginning of April, dropping a little bit because people aren't now losing new, new jobs. People are not being laid off. They were all laid off earlier. So, you know, it's, it's, it's bad out there. It's, it's very tough. And obviously people feel for people who've lost their jobs. But existing and new home sales were going phenomenally uh, prior, uh, before the pre-pandemic. You know, they were just really on an upward trend. Everything was going very, very well. We had a little slow off in, uh, 2018, 2019, but then look at what was happening up until January. Everybody was really jumping in there and doing very, very well. Home sales, we all know. This January and February, we were breaking our records. Those were our best January and February ever, uh, doing extremely well. The weather cooperated with us. Everything was strong. Uh, we had buyers really jumping in all over the place. So, And people anxious to sell too. Anytime anything hit the market, a lot of multiple offers. We know, I mean, January, February, that wasn't that long ago. So again, this is statistics on a national basis. You can see uh, this is inventory of homes for sale. This was the recession, the great recession uh, caused by the mortgage crisis. Obviously a lot of extra homes for sale at that point, but we have 
had a shortage of homes. We've all known that. We've had a, a lack of, of inventory for quite some time. Now, and again, the thought process here is what's happened with the Federal Reserve. We know that during the recession, the Great Recession, um, monetary policy, every the Fed, Fed's funds rate were like next to nothing. They started gradually uh, bringing them back up. And then when the pandemic hit, they dropped them way down again. So dropping of that means lots of liquidity out in the banking industry, which means banks have money to loan there. The government is doing everything they can to try to keep the economy going right now. And again, mortgage rates have historically been tied into the 10-year treasury. Um, this is really fascinating to look at because this is mortgage rates and the 10-year treasury. Right now, again, the jumbo market isn't working. That is true. Jumbo markets are almost all gone because those are not backed by government. Those are private investors. But again, historically, look at how the mortgage rate kind of parallels what the, uh, what the treasury rate is. Again, this is what was happening prior to the pandemic. So you can see that rising home prices, this is the rising home prices, the green line. So you can see that, you know, before the boom and then the bust, our housing prices dropped. But then this is the mortgage. So you can see that mortgages, the amount of money that's out in mortgages compared with the home prices has been pretty level. So this line going up shows the equity that people have in their home versus what their mortgage is. So as home prices go up, obviously more uh, equity in their property. And so even with the pandemic, even with the pandemic, people have still a lot of equity in their homes and the pandemic has not caused a reduction in home prices. And we'll go more into that in a little bit. Housing starts. This is also historically the issues that we've been dealing with. Before the crash of the housing market in 08, 09, we had lots and lots of housing starts. Builders were building with a lot of enthusiasm. Those of us who were in Bend during the time of the crash, remember seeing all kinds of homes that were in different stages of construction, just abandoned as builders had no more money to build, they just left those houses. Um, this was during the recession and coming out of the recession. Housing starts has not kept up with the demand. This is significant, supply and demand. This is why housing prices keep going up. There's not enough housing for the demand. So we were back up here at a point, again, this is national statistics where things were starting to really get a little bit better for that, but now we're having these issues. So since 2019, housing starts on a national basis. You can see it's been bumping up December, January, February, and March has been dropped. I know that new permits pulled since the pandemic has hit, has definitely dropped off. Now, here is a, a really interesting slide that shows the differences between 2000 and 2019. We talk about housing affordability and these are, these are st uh, I don't know what those figures actually have to deal with 122 versus 146, but you can see it's considered a better situation. Mortgage rates, we all know that, 2000, 8.1%, 2019, 4%. 2020, we're talking 3%, maybe even lower than that. But the population from 2000 has grown tremendously from 282 million to 329 million. The population 16 years and older has grown. Households have grown. Jobs have grown up through 2019, obviously, but home sales, new and existing, are worse. So even though population has grown, households have grown, there's less housing. So this again deals with the fact that that's why prices keep going up and we don't have enough inventory for the demand. So now 
According to the National Association, what has the coronavirus impact been? I find this stat, this uh, slide very, very uh, thought provoking and very true based upon what I'm hearing from the brokers. This is a survey, a recently done survey uh, to agents across this, the country, the survey of prices during the pandemic, what buyers are anticipating and what sellers are anticipating. So in the case of sellers, 72% of them have not lowered their price. 16% yes, but less than 5%. 8% have, have lowered it by 5 to 15%. 1% by 11 to 15% and 2% uh, by more than 15%. So sellers are basically sticking to the price, but this is what buyers are thinking. <clears throat> Only 37% think they're not expecting any lower prices. 16% think it's gonna be by less than 5%, they're gonna see a, a price reduction of sellers. <clears throat> but look at this other stat here, 23, nine and 15% think that home prices are gonna drop by at least 5%, if not 15%. The reality, 72% versus what buyers think. And I know we've received a few phone calls, a few um, floor calls from people saying, well, I'm interested now in Ben since it's people are gonna be desperate and I'm now interested as a buyer to come out here and buy something that's at rock bottom prices. The reality is sellers are not dropping prices like that. They're sticking to their guns and rightly so with lack of inventory, a good broker will look at this, look at what's happening and say, yeah, uh, there are still demand out there and Maybe if your house is not getting shown at all, there's no interest, you are overpriced. But reality is homes that are well-priced are still selling and for close to close to asking price. I'm curious to see as we move forward in 2020, what the data is going to show us uh, for April, May, June going forward as to uh, price reductions, how much the differential differentiation is between asking price and selling price. But reality is here, you're gonna hear more from buyers who say, I wanna buy now because, hey, or I'm gonna offer much less because the seller, obviously it's gonna be desperate because of the pandemic, it's not the case. So here is again from NAR, the stimulus help. The stimulus is, the idea is to replace the lost income quickly. Um, the SBA loan covering 80% of payroll, uh, that would be, if it's actually getting out here locally, I don't know how many of the small businesses here have been having success. We know the money that was offered out there um, dried up really quick or was grabbed quickly, um, but now they've offered, they've just come to an agreement, so there's gonna be some more money in there. Also the unemployment insurance added $600 per week enhancement, and then the direct deposit of 1,200 per person. I don't know if anybody locally has received that, I haven't heard of anybody who's received that 1200 per person. Uh, oh, uh, now I just, in correction, I heard someone someone that someone knows did get it. Uh, there's also the mortgage delayed payments, the forbearance, uh, the foreclosure and eviction freeze for a few months. And um, again, the, the added money uh, from the federal government to back up mortgages, corporate debt, municipal bonds and everything. So this is the hope of all that those trillions of dollars that have been thrown out there. Again, federal de deficit. This is the thing that we have to think about in the future. That's a big, scary red line. Um, that will be something to consider in the future. Uh, obviously, the government can't do this that, that long. And they're just printing money, and there's concerns in the future for inflation when you do things like that. So NAR, right tools. We've talked about the fact that we are using the guidelines from NAR and OAR and our local association, Central Oregon, to give us guidance on how to operate as realtors during this point, um, during this difficult time. Also, the telecommuting, the um, tele-office -off meetings, these are all ways that we can definitely keep our business running. So the economic forecast from uh, Lawrence Young of the National Association. GDP growth 2019 was at 2.3%. He's forecasting we're going to be down 
but 2021 back up 3 percent job gains in 2019 2.2 million forecasting negative 4 million but in 2021 plus 2 million home prices they were rising on a national rate of 4.8 percent obviously in central oregon higher than that forecasting zero to two percent in 2020 so stable or maybe slight uptick but back in 2021 back to the two to four percent home sales level in 2020 2019 excuse me forecast he's all over the board here negative five to ten percent increase i think that that would probably be based upon where in the country you are and in 2021 eight to 12 percent increase that's again lawrence young national association of realtors i find his his he is he's a very methodical economist full of charts and graphs he knows his stuff through and through he knows all the little markets he, he was rattling off information about the portland market he was rattling information about the seattle market I mean, he knows all the different major markets around the country. Guy has been doing this a long time. And I think he's pretty spot on traditionally. So something to think about here. So that was from Lawrence. Now I want to get to what's happening locally. So I pulled up some statistics and I just wanted to look at what has happened with Ben Premier? This starting from March 15th to yesterday at 421. So I'm looking comparing 2019 to 2020. And I was really surprised. So during the same time frame, 2019, we had 29 new listings. But this year we had 27 new listings. The volume of those listings in 20 19 was 16 million 400,000 in 2020 13 million 500,000 so down slightly as far as the value of the homes but still the number high almost the same pendings during that same time frame in 2019 we had 15 pending deals that were written for a total value of 25 million 700,000 2020, 45 deals, value of 21,300,000. Very significant, I, I am, I'm really surprised. I had no idea uh, until I actually looked at it because it seemed so slow in the office. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that people have not been in. So I'm used to every day having people come into the office, come in, uh, talk with me about situations. They've been calling me. I mean, yesterday it was like nonstop calling people. And we had some people popping into the office too to use the copier and various things. But we've had almost the same number of deals. Oh, I need to revise that. We had a new deal last night. We're actually at 46 uh, pending. So almost the same. The big difference from 2019 to 2020 was the closed. We had, <clears throat> during that same time, in 2019, 45 deals that closed for a value of 24 million. During the same time, we in 2020, we've had 25 deals closed for 16 million. The difference here was right when that pandemic hit, all of a sudden we had people who were close to closing lose their jobs or back out, just getting scared. So we had a number of people, we, we had a good number of deals. We had at least 10, if not 15 deals, either die or be delayed during the initial couple of weeks of the pandemic. Moving forward, new deals that are being written, they're being written with the understanding the pandemic is in place. I don't anticipate this many deals dying unless somebody new loses a job or something happens. Uh, we'll have deals die for the normal reasons of home inspection, negotiation on repairs, finding something in the preliminary title report. But I don't anticipate of the 45 new deals that we've written that we're going to have that many um, not, not perform or not close based upon the fact that this pandemic is now something that we're living with and we now know what we're doing with it. 
So <clears throat> the next people that we had at this webinar was, uh, there were two um, economists from Portland. Um, both of them really understand Oregon. And so this first slide talks about what has been happening with Oregon's population. And I find this very interesting. We've had, we have been a state that have definitely grown based upon people moving to the state. The natural increase, the light blue, those are people, those are babies being born. Um, the net migration, the dark blue, is people moving to the state. So you can see that we all know that the massive amount of people coming to Bend are not through new babies being born, it's from people relocating here from other parts of the country. A lot of people, of course, from the Portland metro area, the Seattle market, uh, the San Francisco market, Southern California, a lot of that. And here is the cross where we are right now in 2020. Um, again, natural increase. The stats, they said, fascinating. Uh, last, uh, they said uh, last year, what was it? 41, was it 41,000? Yeah, I think it was 41,000 people who have, we are, are, our population of the state increased by 41,000, of which 35,000 of these people were from migration to the state. Only 6,000 were new babies. Interesting slide here. This is unemployment claims in the state of Oregon. As you can see, we have had like almost next to nothing for unemployment. And then March 14th and the big pop up. Fortunately, the number of new claims is dropping. That initial pop was there. Hopefully not too many nor big booms like that. Hopefully over time, all these people who've lost their jobs will get back hired. Uh, this was also an interesting uh, information here. During March 8th, the entire state of Oregon had 106 people who worked in the unemployment offices. Uh, during the week of April 10th, they had to bring in people. We have 450 now to handle all the claims that were made. I know it's been frustrating. I've heard from people who have friends and, and family members and people looking to have gotten claims made at backlog. Obviously, it was like a massive push at the unemployment office, and it takes it's taking some time for people to get through all those claims. So I'm sure with the added staff, they'll get through them. The Oregon's weekly initial claims for unemployment insurance as of April 11th. So this is pretty recent. And you can see where the people were who made the claims. The vast majority were in the accommodation and food services, 10,000 uh, of uh, 47,000 people. Uh, again, uh, people who work in the hotels, people who work in the restaurants. Then, second big chunk here, healthcare and social assistance. Again, all of our medical offices, our doctor's offices, all the elective surgeries, all those people who are not working right now because we're not taking those sort of calls. People are, if you have to see the doctor right now, if it's not a, a, an emergency, you're probably seeing the doctor through a go-to meeting or a Zoom or something like that. You're not seeing them physically. But obviously the staffing at those offices aren't needed. We don't need reception work in a, a doctor's office when there's no one who can come to that office. Retail trade, that makes sense, obviously. All of our shops are closed. Manufacturing, yes, there's been a close closure of that. Construction, absolutely, there's been a slowdown in that. Administration support, waste management, remediation services, these people are, are, are suffering. Also, arts, entertainment, recreation, uh, educational services, people who work at schools. The schools are not operating right now. Everyone's online. There's less work for all these people. Real estate and rental and leasing. So there are real estate offices. I don't know if you guys saw the Inman headlines in which Redfin laid off 40% of their workforce. That's a lot. Um, so anyway, this is what's happening in the state. Now here is the employed workforce versus the, uh, so you can see here what's happened here with the employed workforce. This I believe is the unemployment rate. And so here the unemployment rate during the recession was quite high. 
obviously down to below 4%. And now, well, there's another slide coming after that. So these are all the people who are actually working. And then this is the, the unemployment rate. This next slide took that last little section, and this is just talking about Portland. So you can see here, this is the labor force in the blue line. This is the, uh, the employed. And then the green line is the unemployment rate. And again, this huge bump up. So the labor force, the people employed, and then the unemployment rate. Huge 73% increase in the Portland Metro labor force. Obviously, this could be paralleling what a lot of the state is seeing right now, too. But this, I think, is among the most interesting slide here. This is dealing with real estate in the, Petro in the Portland area. This is showing what's going on with pending listings, pending sales, excuse me, pending sales, listings, and then the white line is canceled contracts, canceled contracts. This is paralleling what we're seeing here in Bend. So pending sales up until March 8th, going along, great, and all of a sudden they dropped. They dropped tremendously. Listings coming up, dropped. Cancel contracts, hugely increased. Just what I, what I was saying about what's happened with Ben Premier. But now listings and pendings going back up and cancellations dropping. And I think that's what we're gonna to continue to see. So the sale ratio versus the average sales price. Again, people are holding to their price. This is the average, this line here, the, the red line is the average sales price. It continues to rise, continues to rise and the percentage closed. This is the absorption rate. You know, if you think about the absorption, or absorption rate, Whatever people put on the market to sell, 70 in 2020 so far, 77% of it sells. So things get absorbed. That's the absorption rate. Obviously during the recession of things that were put on the market, only 35% of them sold in 2008. That was terrible. Um, the anticipation is whatever's put on the market is still going to sell and prices are still you know, according to uh, Lawrence Young, staying flat or going up slightly this year. So again, building permits. This is also, again, an issue we're dealing with. Uh, the multifamily permit is the red. The, the line here is the percentage of multifamily and the blue line is single family residential. Before we had the crash, we were building a lot of single family residential. Coming out, we've been putting a lot more of our building permits into multifamily. But this is one of the things the economist said, we're not keeping up with the demand for single family residential. Obviously, there's some political aspects to this. I know that um, cities are really pushing for more and more multifamily, higher density, wanting all that. The thing is, though, there are still people who need and want single family residential and permits. Again, this is in the Portland area, but again, we're seeing it here throughout the state. Um, there's just not enough single family residential homes uh, being pulled with permits. So here, this economist, his name is Noah. Um, he's talking about the recovery. We were talking before about the V-shaped recovery last week. This is his anticipation. He's from the Oregon Office of Economic Analysis. So here's the peak, the severe recession drop, which we're in right now. Oh, sorry, went too far. So everything dropped back. And now he's anticipating slow growth until health under is under control. His anticipation is after restrictions are lifted, we'll be back, he was saying 60%. That's his thought process. And then depending upon pent up demand and the amount of permanent damage and the policies that are adopted, it may be a, a steeper uptick back to normal, see, or a longer. Again, this is his, his thought process. He's talking it more as a, um, 
Oh gosh. Instead of the V shape, he's looking at this, which may may be true. I, we just don't know. Uh, the top economists around the country are still anticipating more of a V shaped recovery. My personal thought is, I think it's going to come between the two. I I think that if we practice, keep have to keep on practicing our social distances, distancing, um, good habits, maybe no longer shaking hands with anybody ever again. Um, until we actually have a, a vaccine for this, it's not going to be back to 100% to normal. Uh, we're not going to have people going back to the sports arenas and all that sort of stuff until we actually have a vaccine. So what is happening right now in the future? So there's concern in the future that we're going to have inflation with so much money printed. Uh, Lawrence Young predicts 4 to 5% rate in the future, and which is why a lot of people will buy gold, but also real estate. Real estate is a hedge against inflation. Real estate has been a great, strong investment for most people. Also, the idea of immigration is going to be slower with recession. And in Oregon, like I was saying, in 2019, they gained 41,000 in population with 35,000 of us from immigration. Uh, so if it's going to be slower with the recession, fewer people moving here, what's that going to do with our listings? Well, is it going to decrease the amount of, of demand? Not really, because there's fewer listings. So even though we may have fewer people moving here, the thought process of these economists is we have fewer people putting their homes on the market because they're not moving themselves. They're staying put. Uh, in fact, one of a, a deal that we had last week, uh, we had gotten it ratified. We represent, buy, represent the buyer in this case. Um, and in the seller of the property uh, had an issue with their new purchase. And so they decided, hey, we're not going to move, period. Um, we were still at a point where uh, we were in the, some negotiations that the seller still had an out. And so the seller did back out and took their house off the market altogether. So they're going to stay put. We're going to probably see some of that. Um, the thought here also is when they were asking the economists about Ben specifically, uh, the economists came back and said, well, with this thought process about immigration, then we'll have less move-in, maybe an excess in spec homes. Uh, this guy is from Portland. We all know that our builders have not been able to keep up with the demand, but perhaps if there's fewer people moving here, there'll be less demand for those spec homes. I don't know. Also, this having people work at home in the future, perhaps more of that. Um, having a home with two office spaces or two dens in the home may become a new trend if we have families working more from home. So we need uh, people to have their own office spaces to be working from home. If people are finding that it's working for them and if their average commute every day is an hour, wouldn't, wouldn't people like to have that hour back in their life if they could be spending with their family or out recreating or doing other things? So maybe there's going to be more people working at home in the future. Big question here is, though, what about the state budget? And not just Oregon, but the entire country. State budget revenue has definitely fallen a lot based upon the fact that there's not as much tax revenue coming in. Uh, think of hotel taxes, gas taxes, all these sort of things that go to our state revenues. Uh, income taxes. If people aren't working, there's going to be less revenue from income tax. So what will happen with our state our state budget? You know, because the states, unlike the federal government, which, which can print money, states have to balance their budget. So will there be federal help? Perhaps. Maybe the federal government will print more money to give to the states to help them balance their budgets. Uh, can they balance their budgets with bonds? Yeah, that's something. That's something that people invest in our bonds. How about shifting programs around? So maybe say that some of the state agencies have a surplus of funds right now and others don't. Um, maybe shifting some of those programs and staffing around, for instance, uh, that, that new increase of uh, 300 people working in the unemployment offices, they may have been shifted from other government offices to help out. Also, think about 
forbearance versus foreclosure. Forbearance, again, the delaying of the mortgage payments. Uh, is the goal when people are missing their payments to foreclose on the property? We all dealt with that during the recession when we, we were dealing so much with REO properties, with short sales, people who are going through the foreclosure process. Banks don't want to foreclose. We all know that. They would much rather sell the property short. In this case, wouldn't they rather keep those mortgages going and just tack those payments onto the end of the loan or work out some other payment options so people can get caught up when they can't make their mortgage payments? So that's some of the thoughts about what's happening in the future. So going from there, I did want to pull up a couple other things here. <clears throat> this is the data. Um, we talked last time about what was happening in Bend. So this is Redmond, Terrebonne. Uh, we were talking about how during March, the amount of for sale versus solds, uh, how everything had, that the pendings had really gone down a lot in March. Except that's bent. Redmond and outlying areas are still having a massive amount of influx. I don't know how April's gonna impact them, but right now, Redmond, uh, Lapine, Madras, uh, Primeville are all having good times. They have not dropped off the way Bend had. Um, the number of properties for sale had dropped from March of 2019 with March of 2020. But solds, look at that huge increase, 46% of increased sales in March, pending up 20%. This is, this is big. Redmond is a very hot market, very hot market. The average price per square foot in Redmond it's, it's gone up a lot over the year before. I mean, 6% increase. Days on market. The days on market dropped considerably. Uh, sold differentiate is almost the same as far as the sold to asking price. The trend in Redmond, selling prices keep going up. They're going up. And again, months of inventory. The absorption rate, 1.8 months inventory. So our outlying areas are super, super strong. When you take all of Deschutes County and average it out, we're still on an uptick, even though certain sections of Bend had dropped off in March. So what at, what's going to happen in April? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Um, I just know from us here in Bend Premier, we are we are doing just great. We're doing fine. We have people still writing deals, still making things happen. And it's just a little different than it used to be. The other thing I would highly encourage your clients, if they were considering listing and waiting till we're through the pandemic, the pandemic is going to be with us for some time, waiting till they feel more comfortable. I understand that, but we still have buyers right now. As I said last week, I've talked with a number of brokers who say they have buyers ready to buy now. They can't find anything. So lack of inventory is still an issue. We've been doing an awful lot of Matterports. And as I share with my email, we are selling stuff. Our listings are selling. Um, my email talked about some of our listings that have sold recently, some of them that we've had on the market for some time, some of them that just hit the market, some with multiple offers. Uh, I didn't talk about our buyers. We have buyers right now who are also buying. And again, they can't find inventory. So I would advise you guys, if you have any opportunity to talk with clients about listing, encourage them to list now, even if they're, I mean, just let them know what we're seeing. Let them know what the market is showing. Lack of inventory, 1.8 months of inventory in Redmond. 1.8 months of inventory in Bend as well. That's the same same figure in Bend. That means homes that are priced accordingly to market, again, they have to appraise, but they are selling. So just be, uh, be aware of that. So with that in mind, I would like to see here, uh, 
if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and, and talk about things. If you have something that you wanted to share with us, also wanted to let you guys know how much positive feedback we've gotten from our restaurants of the week. Um, we need to get another restaurant going forward for this next week. Uh, so some suggestions, people have ideas of restaurants. We're trying to support probably those restaurants that are really struggling right now. I know I heard a lot of positives from Chomp Chomp, um, uh, Miyagi Ramen. I, I talk with them directly. I haven't heard much personally from them, but I have heard also the, the encouragement that we're getting to these people. It seems to be very, very much appreciated. So uh, anyone have anything that they wanna say? Feel free to unmute yourself and, and talk. Anyone have a question of any sort? Anyone have a have or want? <laughs> Here's another question here. Have or want for anybody? Oh, oh, Jules, Jules, yeah, okay. I like Jules, they seem to be putting out a need for business. I think Jules is a great idea. And Elizabeth, virtual staging company. I have heard of virtual staging companies. I have uh, gone to some um, presentations by them. I think I may have some information from one of them uh, at home. I could probably try to find that for you and get it to you. I couldn't do it today, but it'll have to be tomorrow. Um, Linnea, do yeah. you keep track of where the buyers are coming from right now? Um, my, what I'm hearing from some of the brokers is they're local. Some of these people are local people. They're moving around in the area. Um, anyone else, people that you're working with? Are they local also? I have a couple local buyers, but the other buyers are staying put. Uh, they're quarantined out of state and yeah. Yeah. they're sitting on the fence waiting to see what's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of generally what's happening. I'm hearing that from quite a few people, um, people who are coming here to town, who are flying here, they're not flying. Obviously, they're not flying right now. Um, that's going to be something that's going to be, I don't know how they're going to get the airlines back at proper social distancing in an airplane. Uh, I don't know. I, I was seeing someone uh, on the news this morning, they were talking about airplanes putting in plastic barriers between each seat. I don't know how that would work. Uh, challenging thing here. Oh, Karen, so you say College Hunks is doing more estimates this week? Still people moving to, that's good to know. I'd heard that in Washington state, uh, real estate is still considered a, a essential services, but people who move people, we're talking about moving companies are not. So I don't know how that's working. Um, and yes, Holly, working with three local buyers right now. That's what I'm hearing as well. And impact on lack of jumbo loans. Elizabeth, what I'm telling brokers here that I'm seeing uh, is when you're entering into contract and you're finding that there is a jumbo loan involved, talk directly with that lender. Make sure that that loan is, is secured. Um, or if you have a buyer who's, who's purchasing with a jumbo loan, uh, advise them to talk with their lender just to make sure that it's true. Uh, in one case, we have a deal going on with a jumbo loan in which it's backed by their um, by their uh, invest their 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 uh, deal with a financial planner and is through that financial company. So, Aaron, buyers from Arizona, that's wonderful. Um, Jane, buyers coming out of town, buyer coming in June, good. Renting first, but then going to buy after that. That's wonderful. And good, good. Are they driving up here, Jane? Probably, I would think. Sorry. Uh, yes, they are. They're coming up from Walnut Creek. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So 
people are coming. The weather, when the weather warmed up, just like normal in the springtime, we start getting more business. It happens. So, like I said, 45 deals in this time frame, almost the same as last year. And if anybody wants their car wash, um, it is raining outside right now. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. So, Rob, Wells Fargo jumbo loan failed and the buyer switched to Banner Bank out of Eugene. They've been great. Wonderful. Signing today, closing tomorrow or Friday. That's awesome. Now, some of our lack of sales during that time uh, happened. Uh, they didn't, the deals weren't killed. What happens? They were delayed because financing switched around like that. So, that's good to know. Banner Bank out of Eugene is doing jumbo loans. That's good to know. Very good news. Um, just on a thought on that, Banner Bank has always been my bank. I'm, I don't understand why we don't have a branch here, seeing as they are Pacific Northwest. But they've always been absolutely fantastic. And they act like a local bank, but obviously they're not. So um, if anybody is having issues, I, I strongly suggest Banner Bank too. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you very much, guys. That's excellent news. How about haves or wants? Is anybody looking for a specific listing, type of listing for a buyer or uh, anything that we can talk about that might be coming up? If not, then we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, sign off and guys have a great uh great rest of your week and please keep these good good stories coming i love to keep sharing those that's wonderful thank you guys so much okay talk to you soon bye-bye